Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. So the new roof on the sawmill survived winter storm Elliott with 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts. Now that we've got that figured out, we're gonna go ahead and put the sawmill to another test. And that is milling the biggest log we've ever milled on it before. And no, I'm not talking about the pine log that's sitting on the mill right now that only measures in at 17 inches. I'm talking about this white oak log here that on the skinny end measures about 24 inches but if you take it this way it measures about 44 inches so we'll have to have the log sitting on the mill kind of like how it is right now obviously this end will need to kick up a little bit but it'll be sitting upright so that way we make sure we aren't getting over 40 inches wide for the throat of the sawmill but the plan is we're going to get this on the mill and we're just going to be taking live edge slabs off of this and we'll dry them run them through the planer and then we'll either probably sell them or we'll keep them for use for ourselves. My wife has been on me for a few years now about remodeling our kitchen, and the most expensive part of any kitchen remodel is gonna be your cabinets, second followed by your countertops. And I think it would be really cool and a cool way to save money to use two inch thick live edge white oak slabs instead of getting granite or marble or anything like that. And it would save a boatload of money just using uh, some stuff here off the sawmill. So anyway, with that, we're gonna go ahead and pop this on the mill and uh, see if we can't get it milled up. This, I'm going to have to take this really slow because this log here probably weighs somewhere in the ballpark of 5,000 pounds. And if you don't set that on the mill gently, there's the chance that you could start bending and twisting and breaking things. So we're going to have to move real slow when we're getting this on the mill and make sure we don't accidentally drop something from 6, 12 inches up above the bed rails there. All right, so before we can put this giant white oak log on, we've got to get these pine logs off the mill and the rest of these ones that I had staged here moved out of the way. Yep, she's heavy. Oh. Let's get her out away from over the side of the tracks there. Uh, you know what, let's spin her around the other way. Having that much weight over the final drives isn't good either. You definitely have to be careful when you are carrying this much weight. How does that look? Good. Good? Yeah, just swing it over slowly and then raise it once you get over it. Pick it up just a look. Give a good squeeze again. Pick it up a little bit. Alright, now, swing your house that way and your boom this way to get that rear end uphill. Keep going with your house. Yeah, perfect. Don't drop it. I have a feeling this is going to get in the way no matter what. I can cut that off too. I brought the longer bar and chain down for that kind of stuff. I'll just try and drive backwards and roll it. There you go. Is that good there? Yeah, but you're not even touching that back one over there. Geez, oh man, that was some effort.
Well, after about 45 minutes of screwing around, we got this on the uh, mill here. Hopefully we can take a good four or five slabs off to lighten the load and get, let, allow us to get a better grip. Plus it'll give us a nice flat spot once we get about halfway down through the log, we'll go ahead and pull it off the mill, set the flat side down, and then take, it, take the rest of it down in slabs. Just make sure this log don't roll towards you. Yeah, that's... Good goodness. What's that? That just... That's a lot of saw for this little mill. <laughs> yeah. So you can see here the knot on the left side of that log is not going to clear the feed roller bearing of that sawmill blade. So we're going to go ahead and clean that up with a chainsaw right now. going to be a challenge. We're going to have to get cut through the log. And then once it's through, we can't bring it back until we take that slab off the top of it. take a while. That's a new blade. You hog right through that. I'll tell you one thing though that was probably the most stressful cut I've ever made on the sawmill because we were close on the top bottom sides. Well uh, no we're not close. <laughs> we're actually pinched. Oh yeah. So we're gonna have to figure out how to back that up and get it down out of there. Yeah. So you ready for a stiff drink now or what after that? <laughs> Between putting it on with the excavator and everything up here. Jeez, oh man. Oops. Good there? Uh, you about in the middle there? Yep. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Yeah, that thing's dull now. Yeah, it just all of a sudden quit cutting. 
Might as well see if I can get through it. There's something in there that's metal, because all of a sudden it just quit cutting. Ready? All kinds of wood or uh, Dirt. mud. Frozen mud. Frozen mud, maybe. That's hard. Well, at least we got enough cleared off here that we can make another couple uh, two inch slabs out of this. So let's do that now. Put the two heavy ones on top of each other? Sure. Get it cl back closer to the pivot point on the uh, floater. You drop one, two, three. Make sure you brush some of that into your pockets. <laughs> Funny story, I've actually gone into work in my office job with sawdust from cutting firewood in my pockets before. I usually find the sawdust in the charging port of my phone. <laughs> yeah. Then I gotta use a toothpick to get it out. Boy, that's pretty. That is really cool looking. So what do you think? You gonna flip it over now? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Get it flipped over on the mill, this flat side down, and then we can just start slabbing the rest of it out. Trim it where we need to. That's the nice thing about doing uh, live edges. You don't have to worry about squaring up on the other edges. Oh my, I couldn't imagine trying to cut dimensional lumber out of this log. It'd be so much work. You, to do that, you'd have to have uh, a hydraulic mill and probably one a lot bigger than this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there will do it. All right, so Adam's got this uh, shed roof on the mill now. Boy, that roof, you know, when you look at that, when you're standing there milling at them. I'll be out of the sun. You're, you're out of the sun and everything, so. Probably won't be down here milling in the rain, but it'll keep the uh, engine dry and me out of the sun when we're doing it in the dead hot of summer. Yeah, so as long as uh, no reasons for that roof to ever rip the mill off, I think that's uh, probably a good deal you got going there and now. And I, I do like the fact that it is attached to the mill itself, the carriage and as I'm moving, the roof is moving with me. So yeah, like we mentioned, if I'm milling, I'll be in the shade the whole time I'm running the mill. Yep. I don't think you went high enough. Yep. I thought I was up high enough. I didn't look close enough. And, and there you have it. The quick way to take a blade off.
Can't do it any faster than that, I guarantee it. Yeah, don't raise your blade up high enough when you're backtracking. All right, so that kind of took two hands, but uh, it's all back on. Just caught the edge of that log right there and popped it off. No big deal. No harm, no foul. Loosen it up, put it back on, and retighten it down. Sure is pretty though. Yeah, it is. I have these live edge slabs laid out in the order in which we milled them to give you kind of an idea of the cross section of the tree. Starting with the first piece that we took off after we got the top slab off, getting into some thicker wood, moving into more of the center of the tree, and right here is about the middle of the tree, and you can see a color change. These two are a little bit lighter, this one is a little bit darker, and darkness in hardwoods represents rot. And sure enough, on the bottom side of this piece here, we start getting into rot, and by the time you transition to the top of this piece, we are fully rotted all the way through and it just continues to deteriorate. And then we start working our way back out the other side of the tree and getting away from that rot with this piece here. You can see once we get to the bottom side of this piece, we start getting back into solid wood. And I think it's actually really cool. You can see where the rot ends just barely fades into this piece here and those two line up, which I thought was kind of cool. And then as we get back to the last one here, we are completely out of the rot and we have another full live edge slab. Another thing I wanted to mention for any new Sawyers out there is this sawmill is an easy boardwalk 40, which means that its maximum diameter log that it's supposed to be able to handle is a 40 inch diameter log. That only is true if you're milling dimensional lumber, meaning that you are taking your top slab off, side slabs, and bottom slab off. And then you start milling your 2x4s, 2x6s, 1x8s, whatever it is, but by removing those slabs, you're also removing a lot of thickness off of that tree that you originally started with. But if you're planning on milling live edge slabs, the opening on this throat here is only 32 inches wide. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Dimensional lumber, you can do a 40 inch diameter log, but if you're doing live edge slabs, you can only do a 32 inch diameter log. 
Another thing I wanted to show you guys is the end of this one live edge slab here. Look at the crotch figure on the end of this log. And you got a little bit of spalting in there too. This is what I love about milling my own lumber is every slab you take off is a different piece of artwork. I mean, sure, some of this stuff down here that's nice and clean and clear is beautiful as well. But when you find stuff like this, this is what makes it all worth it. Just a beautiful piece of artwork not made by human hand. So I went ahead and measured these up as well. They are all 10 foot 6 inches long. And I milled them anywhere from two inches to three inches thick. Some of them are two and a quarter, two and a half, three inches, all different sizes in there, depending on what I want to use it for. And then the widths vary. I think that one is 14 inches wide, 24 inches wide. And you know, down here in the thick parts, they're anywhere between 30 and 32 inches wide. But these ones here are probably 24 inches at the thinnest, and then about 30 or 32 around these big knots here. This was probably the most difficult log we've ever put on the sawmill just because of the size and weight of it. And I definitely needed a second set of hands and a second set of eyes, or I guess in our case, a third eye. Thanks, neighbor Doug. But yeah, every time we had to move this log to either pull it off the mill or put it back on was at least a half hour, 45 minutes of screwing around, just trying to be really careful not to drop it on the mill. And as you saw in some of that footage, we still managed to drop it just a little bit. That's all the feathers, is it clear? Luckily, we didn't do any damage, but uh, yeah, for all the headaches and effort that went into these live edge slabs, I think it was definitely worth it. They're absolutely beautiful and true works of art. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.